everybody, welcome to Relish. I'm Allie, I am a nutritionist and a yoga teacher and I'm here to talk to you about nutrition every week. This week is all about turmeric. I've got it right here. Take a sniff. <laughs> I love turmeric. So, what well, thought, hey, let's talk about it. It's nice, it's a nice warming um, spice, especially for right now and curries, things like that, when it's cold outside. But there's so many other great things about turmeric. And we're gonna be making golden milk. Sometimes it's called moon milk. Sometimes it's called turmeric milk. But all of those different names, it's a delicious beverage. And if you would like to get the recipe, it's already in the comments section. It's from a website called Downshiftology, which you can find on relish.com. And this is a really good beverage. So we're gonna talk a little bit about history and then I'm gonna start heating the milk so that I can hold on to it during the show. It's gonna be great. So if you have any questions or comments during the show, please put them in the chat. I love having a conversation during the show, especially if it is about the topic that we're talking about. So today, turmeric. Questions or comments about that, that would be great. Welcome to the show. <clears throat> Hope you're having a great day so far. So let's talk turmeric. We're going to do a little bit of history, a little bit about turmeric, and then some health benefits. Interspersed is the recipe for turmeric milk, also known as golden milk. You've probably heard of it. Um, it's kind of become a popular thing in the last couple of years, <clears throat> and it is delicious. So turmeric. Turmeric is a root very similar. It looks a lot like ginger. It's in the same family. So it's a relative of ginger. and But if you cut it across it, it has a very bright orange color. So it's a little bit darker than ginger. You would definitely know the difference if you cut into two. And turmeric is a smaller root than ginger. So we talked about ginger last week. We're talking about turmeric this week. And we talked about cinnamon the week before. We're going to be using some cinnamon in our milk as well. So everything's tying in. All right. So ginger, same relative, as, or turmeric, same relative as ginger. And it is a yellowish orange color on the inside. The outside is kind of the same brown color as ginger. And it is common in India and Southeast Asia and Middle Eastern cooking. Uh, the use of turmeric dates back over four, around 4,000 years ago, which is, that's a long time ago. So it's been around for a while in the Vedic culture of India, and it was used as a culinary spice. It was used in religious ceremonies, and it was also used to, as a medicinal treatment for things, especially like breathing issues. So that was interesting. And we'll go into how other cultures have used it and also how it's being used today. But I thought that was pretty interesting. 4,000 years ago. That's a long time ago. Uh, it probably, the, the prediction is it probably reached China in 700 AD, East Africa by 800 AD, and West Africa by 1200 AD, and then Jamaica into the 18th century. <clears throat> India produces nearly all of the world's turmeric, which that's pretty amazing. And they consume, people in India consume about 80% of the turmeric in the world. So Indian food uses a lot of turmeric. And that's, uh, that was, I thought, very interesting. And Indian turmeric is considered the best in the world. So Arode, which is a city in southern India, is the basically the capital of turmeric production. It's the largest producer, the city is the largest producer in the world. It's considered the trading center for turmeric. It's also known as Yellow City or Turmeric City. So that's a little bit of the background. Before turmeric can be used, it has to be processed a little bit. So they take the root or the rhizome is what people also call it, and they boil it or steam it and then they let it kind of gelatinize into a starch and then it's made into the powder so that it's all um, kind of evenly powdered and the same color 
And then that's how you get the ground turmeric that we see in the store. And also this is turmeric. So, so it's processed, it gives it that very distinct color. And turmeric gives, so it's most known for the color that it gives curry. So this is curry. This is the turmeric and this is curry. There we go. So almost the same color. So you can tell that there's, there's a good amount of turmeric in this curry, which gave me a great idea. I'm going to make curry tonight for dinner because it's the theme is turmeric and curry today. So it gives a great, that, that really distinct the yellow color for curry, but it's also used in a lot of other products. For example, yellow mustard. Yellow mustard gets its color from turmeric. If you read the ingredients, it's typically from turmeric, which is great because that's a natural color. You don't have to use any of the fake stuff to give it that nice yellow color. Um, it's also used in a lot of other ingredients, or in a lot of other products like beverages, uh, baked goods, ice creams, yellow cake mix, yogurt, orange juice, popcorn, icings, cereals, sauces, and gelatins. So. It's a great coloring agent, especially you don't have to use a whole lot and it gives a lot of color. So that's pretty cool too. In South Africa, it is typically used um, with white rice to give it a yellowish color. So that's, there's a, we have a little break in our history right now in our uses. I'm going to start heating up the recipes so that it can be nice and warm to consume during the show. Okay, so again, this recipe is from Downshiftology and it is called Golden Milk or Turmeric Milk. You can find this on relish.com, such a good recipe. Okay, so you start off with a milk beverage. So you can use Cow's milk, you can use almond milk, you can use coconut milk, soy milk, help milk, oat milk, any sort of milk beverage. Today I will be using almond milk. Two cups. Okay, so I've got everything all measured out over here. Two cups of almond milk, pour it in the pan. All right, and one teaspoon of, so this makes two servings, one teaspoon of turmeric which seems kind of like a lot. So if, if that, it is kind of have a nice earthy flavor, but if you want to scale back, totally fine. Okay, we've got our turmeric and let's see, a pinch of black pepper. So I'll get into why black pepper is used in a little bit. There is a reason for it besides flavor. And a fourth of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. We used cinnamon a couple weeks ago. We know how delicious it is. And okay, and that was, oh, and then you can put maple syrup. I'm not gonna put maple syrup because I kind of like the flavor of it without the sweetener, but you can do one to two tablespoons of maple syrup is what it suggests. Some other people like to add other ingredients. I'm going to be adding some coconut oil. It adds just kind of a nice, texture and flavor. Other people add ginger, cardamom, uh, peppercorns. So there are lots of options or vanilla extract. I'm using vanilla, unsweetened vanilla almond milk. So it's going to have that vanilla flavor. All right. So let's get this heating. I'm going to check in on it in about five minutes. So now we can continue our conversation. Okay, so the traditional healthcare practice in India is called Ayurvedic medicine and turmeric is a big component of Ayurvedic medicine. There, there are so many ways that it's used in Ayurvedic medicine, the turmeric, for example, some people have used it to strengthen overall energy in the body. It's also been used to improve digestion. It's been, it's helped regulate menstruation or the pain that comes with that. Um, 
helping dissolve gallstones and also relieving arthritis. That's one body of ways that Ayurvedic medicine has used it. I also found another research that I did that it's also in Ayurvedic medicine, it's also been a well-documented treatment for respiratory conditions, which I, I think I did mention earlier, and um, as well as liver disorders, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetic wounds, and also for just like the common cold, runny nose, cough, sinusitis. So that's pretty interesting. That's a lot of ways to use it. Uh, and now, so that is in India. In South Asian countries, it's used as an antiseptic for cuts, for burns, for bruises, and also as an antibacterial agent. In Pakistan, it's used as an anti-inflammatory agent, um, especially for issues with your gastrointestinal tract or any sort of other digestive disorders that's been used for that. And then also in Pakistan and in Afghanistan, turmeric has been used to help clean wounds and stimulate the recovery of that wound by putting some turmeric on a piece of burnt cloth and then applying that to the wound. I thought that was really interesting. And now, more recently, it has also been used in some formulations for sunscreens and also face creams and, um, and lotions, which is interesting, which I will go into why I think that probably is. Um, so interesting. So it's used in a lot of different countries, a lot of different cultures for different reasons. Overall, it seems like a pretty great spice. So let's move into the health benefits of turmeric. So first of all, there's a bioactive compound in turmeric called curcumin. There's a lot of, uh, of that sound, turmeric curcumin. Uh, curcumin is the bioactive compound in turmeric that gives it all of its, all the good aspects of turmeric. It, it's mostly well known as an anti-inflammatory and an anti, or as an antioxidant. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about those. Um, but a little side note, in my research I did find that the content of curcumin in turmeric is pretty low. That only about 3% of the turmeric is curcumin. So you're not getting a huge amount. So all of these therapeutic things that, um, that it's used for, it's going to be kind of hard to get from just using the spice in your cooking. So probably more likely to get those benefits from taking some supplements. Talk to your doctor about how much to take and, and all that, or if that's, that's something that you should be taking. But anyway, it's still, it still has some good properties to it. And this is also interesting. So it's also curcumin is not absorbed in the bloodstream very easily. Luckily, an element that is found in black pepper called piperine helps you absorb the curcumin. So that's why a lot of times you'll find curries or anything where you're going to have some turmeric. There's always typically black pepper mixed in so that it helps with the absorption into our bloodstream. And if you're buying the curcumin as a supplement, you're going to find that most good supplement companies are going to add that piperin into it. The piperin helps absorption increase by 2000%. So it really helps. It's like this vehicle that helps the curcumin get into your blood system. Let's go check our recipe. So that's interesting. All right. Oh yeah. It's warming up. All right. I'm going to use my whisk so that we can whisk in some of the turmeric, some of the cinnamon. Oh my goodness. It smells so good, especially the cinnamon. So the, the turmeric is giving it a really nice orangish yellow color. Mostly yellow. I guess that's why it's called yellow milk. But sometimes it's called moon milk because the cinnamon kind of clumps on the top and it looks like the moon, which it does. 
And there are all kinds of moon milks out there. If you Google it, there's so many different kinds. This is kind of, I think this is maybe one of the first ones that was ever um, put out there. Okay. I'm just going to let that sit for a couple of minutes off the burner for four minutes because it said to let it simmer for 10 minutes. So I'll do four more minutes and then that will have been about 10 minutes. Okay, so back to the piperin and the curcumin. <laughs> also, curcumin is fat soluble, so it helps if you have it with a little bit of fat or probably the supplement might have some fat in it too if you're taking supplements. Uh, so as an overall, curcumin or turmeric is currently being studied in clinical trials for lots of different things. For um, cancer research, particularly colon and pancreatic cancer, Alzheimer's disease, blood diseases, and psoriasis. So a variety of different conditions for sure. Um, so that's kind of the overall. I'm going to go into specifics now of ways that curcumin in the turmeric has been helpful for people's health. First of all, it's an antioxidant which we all know, I feel like I talk about antioxidants every week because I think they're really important and they're in a lot of things. So it's an antioxidant that helps with all the free radicals out there in the environment, free radicals that we ingest. This helps get rid of those free radicals. So we want these antioxidants in our life. Also, curcumin boosts the activity of our body's own antioxidant system, the enzymes. So that's a bonus antioxidant itself and it helps our own. That's good. And another great thing that it does is that it has anti-inflammatory properties. So backing up, scientists have found that this chronic low level of inflammation that we might be having in our bodies plays a major role in chronic diseases particularly the heart disease, cancer, metabolic syndrome, Alzheimer's, and other degenerative conditions. So curcumin is a very, very well known for its anti-inflammatory components. So this is good for our health, and it has been found that some, that it, uh, when compared to anti-inflammatory medications, curcumin, has, is just as powerful and just as effective, which is great because it's a natural substance. Our body can handle it a little bit nicer, a little bit easier. So that's pretty interesting. And in this whole theme of anti-inflammatory, it has been found to help with arthritis. There was a study where people were people with rheumatoid arthritis were given curcumin and they found that it was just as effective as anti-inflammatory medications. So that's huge, that is great. So if, um, if you have that, uh, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, maybe talk to your doctor about that, but um, I thought that was an interesting study. And also in the inflammation theme, they, there have been some studies that have found that it could help with blood sugar control, particularly for people that may be prone to get diabetes. So there was a study of 240 people, and they all were pre-diabetic, and they were given curcumin supplements for nine months, and at the end of those nine months, they found that the group that was given the curcumin were less likely, their odds were much lower of producing or of getting diabetes. So that was pretty cool. Okay, let's go check on our beverage. And I'm going to pour it into my mug. My friend Kelly gave me this mug. It has a big A on it. I love it. I've been using it a lot. Okay. So I'm just gonna ladle it in, make it a little bit easier. It smells so, so good. So, so good. All right, I'll do one more scoop. Okay, let's 
see if I can show you the results. Ooh, gosh, that's kind of hard to see it. Okay, maybe I'll just fill the mug all the way so you can see it because I really want to show you how delicious this looks. It is very, very yellow. Okay, well, I guess, <laughs> I guess this mug holds two servings. All right. Okay, there we go. The trimmer definitely does color things yellow. If you use spoons to make cur curries and they turn yellow, it's the turmeric. Okay, let's see if I can show you. Okay. I'll take a picture and post it on Instagram too, because I do want you to be able to see it. Okay. So, where were we? Okay, we were talking about blood sugar control. All right, now this is another area that it has been found to be helpful and that it has helped with depression. So this is so interesting. So there was a study and there were 60 people with depression in the study and they were randomized into three different groups. One group took Prozac, one group took a gram of curcumin, and the third group took Prozac and curcumin. And they, they did this for six weeks. And at the end of the six weeks, they found that curcumin did lead to improvements similar to Prozac. And the most effective group was the group that did the Prozac and the curcumin. So it does do something. And that, that is a good thing. Another area that they have studied is heart disease. And that kind of goes back to the whole inflammation um, concept that there are studies looking at to see if it could maybe reverse heart disease. And one of the things that curcumin can do is help the functioning of your endothelium, which is the lining of your blood vessels. So it helps your blood vessels pump blood and helps your blood pressure. So it just makes it stronger on the inside. So that's huge, especially if we're pumping blood through our bodies, our heart health, very important and also for blood clotting as well. So last but not least, it has also been studied um, and there have been some findings that it could improve our brain health. So curcumin can increase our brain levels of a growth hormone in our brain called BDNF. That stands for brain derived neurotrophic factor or BDNF. And it, it is found that it can increase the levels of that growth hormone in our brains and that can help with reversing some brain diseases and help with just our, main, our brain health in general, the functions of our health, or the functions of our brain health, excuse me. So that's, that's huge. That's a, that's a really, really good thing. So turmeric, curcumin, piperin, which is the bioactive compound in pepper. Those two, that work, the piperin works with the curcumin, which is in the turmeric, which helps our bodies in many ways. Antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant or anti-inflammatory category, things like arthritis, blood sugar control. It can also been, it's been found to help with depression reversing heart disease, and improving our brain function. So many good things that turmeric and curcumin can do. So, oh yeah, here's my cup. Really, really good. Okay, you know what? I'm going to pour it into this glass because I really want you to be able to see it. Okay, I'm going to do it over the pan so that I don't get a yellow color over everything. All right, so this is an important drink. Okay, okay, that's much better. Now you can see it. It kind of looks like I'm drinking soup. So good, and it's so warm and comforting. I think that we're gonna have curry for dinner tonight, and I think that maybe this might be my beverage for after dinner because it's just so cozy. So 
I highly recommend trying this golden milk. The link is down in the chat. You can also find it on relish.com, but it is from the Downshiftology website. Golden milk. And yeah, look on relish too for some of the other moon milks or usually if you look up moon milk, there's going to be all different kinds, not necessarily turmeric. I saw there's a cinnamon one. Or this one called cinnamon roll, I think. Moon milk. But yeah, they're all different ones. There's a blue one uh, with marshmallows in it that looked interesting. So definitely check out relish.com for some moon milk ideas. And try this recipe too. It is really good. If you like it sweeter, you can add the maple syrup or honey or agave nectar, whatever you use for your sweetener. But I don't really think it needs it especially if you use vanilla, unsweetened vanilla milk beverage. So turmeric is that beautiful yellow color. It's kind of yellow orange um, that gives curry. It's nice color. It's nice um, earthy flavor. It definitely has a very earthy smell to it. So not to be con confused with curry because curry has a lot of other spices mixed into it like cumin and uh, chili peppers and sometimes cinnamon sometimes cardamom sometimes oh, what else yeah the cumin seeds but yeah all the oh peppercorns usually so pull out your turmeric make some curry make a golden milk so many different things you can use with turmeric. Actually, you know what else you can do is you can put it in smoothies. I love putting it in smoothies. Just a little bit, especially if you're making a smoothie that's going to be yellow, like one with like a mango base. It adds a really nice color. Or if you don't care about the color, I've added it to blueberry smoothies as well. So you've got options. It's a great superfood to just toss in to your smoothie. So I think that kind of covers everything about turmeric, turmeric for today. Thank you so much for joining the show. I'm going to make sure that we don't have any comments I haven't addressed. It looks like we're good. Okay, well, everybody, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again next week with a different topic. I'm Allie. I'm here every week talking about nutrition and all kinds of interesting recipes to go along with it. Have a great night. I'll talk to you all soon. Okay, bye.